Hi everyone, I'm Matt from Relevance AI. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use Workforce Builder. Workforce Builder is our new drag and drop UI for building multi-agent systems. So to start off, you can just go to the Workforce tab, which you'll see in the side menu here. And I'll show you a workforce that I've put together a little bit earlier. You can see that a workforce is made up of a few components. We've got triggers, agents, tools, as well as conditionals. All of these nodes are also connected up by edges, which essentially allow you to decide how they work together and exactly how they communicate. So the purpose of Workforce Builder is to essentially extend what you can already do in relevance, like agent building and tool building, by giving you a much more visual way of exactly mapping out how you want everything to work so that you can build larger automations that incorporate more agents. So today I'll show you quickly how to create a simple um, workforce like this one. This one's just made up of a single custom agent as well as a few tools and agents that I've cloned from the templates tab. So let's go to a fresh one here. So this is essentially the custom agent that I've made. You can see it's quite simple. It's just got a simple role. You're a polite and friendly customer service rep. Your task is to um, answer questions and messages from customers. And then I've got simple step instructions here. So the step instructions are essentially first use the FAQ writer when you receive a message from a customer. Again, FAQ writer is, is an agent that we have in our templates tab. And then it says, once you've made the FAQ article, use the SEO optimized blog writer, which is another agent in our templates tab to create an article. And then finally output an email response. So I'll show you how we can use all of that in a new workforce. So you can see here that we have a manual message. This is essentially whenever you message your workforce, this is gonna be where that trigger, kind of ent the entry point for that trigger. So let's start with adding our agents. The first agent we will add is the customer query agent, which we just went through. That's our custom one. And then let's add a few more. Um, let's add the FAQ writer, add agent, and let's add the blog writer. And finally, we want to add the tool, which is send email via Gmail. Okay, so now we've got everything on the on the graph. This is where you kind of set everything up so you can decide how it all works together. So if I just drag manual message to customer query agent, that means anytime I message my workforce, it's gonna go to this agent. This then becomes a bit of an orchestrator agent that determines how it uses everything else on the graph, similar to how sub agents work uh, in the current agent builder. So from customer query, I'm gonna connect it up to the FAQ writer. And you can see here in the side panel, I get to choose the communication style. I've got two options. One is let agent decide, <clears throat> one is force handover. So let agent decide essentially means that this becomes a tool call. Customer query agent can choose when and how to use FAQ Writer based on the instructions that we gave it, which we went through before. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna leave it as that. I'll let it decide when to use it. And then I'll also connect up the SEO blog writer. And yeah, I'm happy for it to, to also decide when to use this. And seeing as I've got the instructions for how to use it in core instructions, I can also add some details about how to call it in here. But seeing as this is a pretty simple workflow, um, I don't think we're gonna need so many, any more details than what's already in core instructions. Finally, let's connect up this send email by Gmail. Now, I could absolutely set this up with let agent decide and just tell it to use it in the core instructions. That would work very, very well. But just for the sake of uh, showing you guys, I'm going to show you what a forced handover is. So a forced handover essentially means that when this agent is finished, I want you to always run this tool. This means that you get a good balance of, you know, agentic decision making with the agent being able to decide to use these. But then also, if you always want something to happen, <clears throat> you can use forced handover. And like I said, you can use let agent decide. And as long as you instruct it, clearly, it should always make the decisions based on your instructions. But this just gives you a little bit more deterministic style of uh, creating, creating agents. So let's go with this. Um, I'm just gonna save this and then let's see how it works in the task view. Um, so I access the task view by clicking on the run tab and you can see here I've got a, I've got a task view similar to what we have in Agent Builder. And let's just give it a task. So I'm gonna say user Matt B says, uh, with email relevance AI says, how do I add tools to agents in Relevance AI? So let's see how that goes. So 
So it's sending the message to the workforce now, and you'll see that it's sent it straight to customer query agent because that's how we connected it up. So it sent a message, customer query agent has sent a message to FAQ writer, how do I add tools to agents and relevance AI, which is exactly what our customer asked. Um, now the FAQ writer is doing a few tool steps. So these are, th these are two tools that are added to this agent already. Um, they're just part of the part of the agent. It comes with it when you, when you clone it from the templates tab. So it's performed a Google search. It's then extracted and summarized the web content. These are tools attached directly to this agent and it's given us a response here. So FAQ writer provided an update that gets sent back to customer query agent, who's our orchestrator agent. And it's now moved on to work with the SEO optimized blog writer, saying the same thing. SEO blog writers written a blog. That's great. We can use that, send that to our, to our marketing team and they can then uh, add that to the site if we need. And now it's given customer career agent is given its final, final update as we prompted it to, to basically say, okay, it's given us a email output. And then because we set it up in the graph, send email by Gmail. This is the, t this is the tool step that we asked to be run as a forced handover, so this will always get run. And you can see that it's sent an email with the email body that got sent to it by the agent. Um, and it should be sent to my email. And it is, yeah. So this is an example of how you can run a very simple workforce. Um, you could easily extend this by adding triggers or adding more conditionals. But this is just a really easy way to get started with a very simple use case. So. What I'll do now is I'll show you a little bit more of a complicated use case about where really you can take this. Um, we have a working example here, which is probably more of a, an, an advanced use case, but it's something that's very easy to do once you have set up a few agents. And this is a customer support workforce. So you can see here that the way we've set this up is we've got a main agent that gets the message from the, from the manual trigger which is sending a message. And then this has four agents attached to it, which it can choose to use. So beneath those, we've got another one, Ticket Router, which essentially has seven agents attached to it. And based on the kind of requests it's, it receives, it will choose which of these agents to use to get the answer that it needs. And these will then be sent back to the Ticket Router, which can then send the answer back up to Sunny, which can then um, use these other tickets to then respond to the customer. So I'll give you an example quickly of how Sunny, the support agent, is set up as well as, well as Ticket Router, because these are our main agents that control how we use all of these other agents in the graph. So let's have a look at Sunny. So Sunny, the support agent, has some pretty comprehensive instructions here. And you can see that I've mentioned a few times how to use the, the agents that it's attached to. So you can see here we've got if the message is from Intercom, use Intercom Ticket Unpacker. That is how you basically instruct it to use the agents that it's connected to. But you can also set that in the workforce in the how to use this agent tab as well. And you can see a few other paid places in the instructions. Unpack the message using Message Unpacker. Um, pass the full unpacked report to Ticket Router, etc. So this is how you can kind of reference the agents that it's connected to in the graph. Um, let's also now have a look at the ticket router agent. So let's now have a look at the ticket router agent back, back in our graph. And ticket router does essentially the same thing. It's got a set of instructions here, and these are instructions for how to use each of the agents attached to it. So integration manager finds information for tickets regarding third-party software, bug and error about bugs, et cetera, et cetera. And then we can see that reflected again in the graph. Ticket router is connected to all of these agents. So to show you an example of the type of um, the type of use case that this might be able to serve, let's imagine that a user has sent a question. Tell me how the API tool step works. My email is Matthew at Relevance AI. You can see here that Sunny is essentially sending message to Message Unpacker, which responds to Sunny, which sends it to Ticket Router, and then there's a lot of back and forth between Ticket Router and a few other tickets before we finally get down to the output, which is returned back to Sunny. Sunny being our main agent, then responds 
here is the how the API tool set works, which you can then hook up to other tools to either respond to directly to the customer or your internal customer service team could then use this as their response. So under the hood, this is connecting up to our docs. It's connecting up to anything you would need to answer those questions. I won't go through all of that now in this video, but this is just to give you an idea of the type of use case that you can um, set up really clearly and obviously really clearly visualize how it, how it works so that you can edit it, extend it, get other parts of the team to work on it or duplicate it so you can serve more use cases uh, as, you, as you kind of build it out. So yeah, that's everything with Workforce. Um, if you want to get started, like I said, just go to the Workforce tab. It's available to all pro and above paying users right now um, with hopes to make it available to everybody in the future shortly. Um, but you just go to the Workforce tab, click Create New Workforce, and then drag on any agents and tools and then just have a play around and see how you go. Love to hear anyone's feedback and any questions, of course, always reach out to us. We're happy to help. Thank you very much.